If I run this program, someone can copy any file from my computer over the network. It's purposely built server to be vulnerable to the buffer overflow attack. You can see how easy it is to copy a file I shouldn't have access to. But do you know that hidden bugs like this can be waiting in any for now safe program to be found and exploited? Do you know how the buffer overflow attack works? Well, in this video I'll show you just that. I have prepared two programs vulnerable to this attack. You can download them from my GitHub profile. The link is in the video description. The concepts shown here may sometimes be used on other programs, but do not perform these actions on someone else's system without permission. This is for educational purposes only. Keeping that in mind, let's get started. What is a buffer overflow attack? In essence, it's about getting out of the intended memory space. Let's show that in my example program. I have a message buffer and the file name variable. They are, they are next to each other in the code and also in the computer memory. We can also see that if the program is running. If I subtract the hex values of the pointers, I get 5, exactly the size of the message buffer variable. Let's start by writing to the message buffer variable. I can write the first 5 characters. After that, I have the next memory location, which corresponds to the first character of the file name variable. At this point, I'm writing to an unwanted memory location. This can be shown if I print the file name variable. And this is how the buffer overflow attack works. By doing this on larger and more complex programs, it's possible to achieve various unwanted actions, actions that the program should not do. For example, changing the flow of the program on if statements, or changing a file sent over the network. Now I will show you my second program. It's a server that receives an ID from a client and then sends back a predefined file. There is a lot of network stuff, but the most important is the receive command. It will save data from the network to the message buffer variable. It will write a predefined maximum of 1400 bytes. The problem lies in fact that the variable message buffer is only 4 bytes long. That means buffer overflow can happen. In fact, buffer overflow will happen if a client sends more than 4 bytes and a server receives more than 4 bytes. Receive may not always receive maximum byte count at once because of network-related stuff like slow connection. But that's another topic. Let's continue. On my system, after compiling and running the program, variables message buffer and file name are 50 bytes apart from start to start. Message buffer is 4 bytes in size, then I have 46 bytes of gap, and then file name begins. To achieve buffer overflow attack, a client has to send 4 bytes of his ID, one integer. Integers are 4 bytes in size. After that, he needs to send 46 bytes of garbage data. And after that, file name string. If the client does exactly that, it's possible to copy any file from the computer, as long as the running server has reading permissions for that file. If the server is running with highest privileges, it's possible to copy any file from the system. Pretty scary, right? In the case of this program, someone could potentially copy your passwords, pictures, videos, and other files. In some other cases, someone can change system settings, disable firewall, and even more. How to fix that problem? Well, on my server, just change the number of bytes that are received from the network to 4. Another solution is to increase the size of message buffer variable to 1400. And how about other programs? If you are into IT, you already know how to deal with this stuff. And if you are not that tech savvy, the best defense against this and almost any other attack is to know what you are installing on your system and to frequently run updates for operating system and user programs. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.